Hello. This is the first meeting of a new group, a closure group around visual tools. By visual tools, we mean tools that allow us to use data visualizations, typically in a very dynamic and playful way, and to create documents, visual documents, like in this literate programming fashion, and things around that. And in this meeting, we will start to organize ourselves as a group. And we'll begin by a few updates of the people here. We are 14 people now, and we were presenting ourselves. And a few of us will present a little more. Um, and I, let us all kind of try to be uh, clear today, because we are kind of creating new connections uh, with many new backgrounds. And so let us try to think of each other and see if we can try to make things clear and easy and also brief because we are so many. So uh, David, uh, would you maybe uh, share something as you suggested? Sure. So I think it was Pavel who, when we were going around doing introductions, who talked about like having a a like a knowledge base knowledge store this is my prototype i actually use this live in production for my work and so i have to be very careful about what goes on my screen because i didn't have time to put up a put together a dog and pony show so um what what i have here there's really two pieces of this the first piece is that everything that you see inside the window is completely dynamic um i uh it's like uh, like using tools namespace to reload and there's a file watcher that does that. And, um, and there are a couple of other things. Let me see if I can find a namespace quickly. Is the, the, the text big enough or do I need to make it bigger? Actually, I will make it bigger. Just let's do with that. Um, I'll come back to that in a second. So when, so this here is the source code for, for the notebook here, for the UI part of the notebook. I'm gonna go to the very top here. In the reload part, uh, we are all, we're probably all familiar more or less with the, the reloaded model or something similar to that. I've done something sim simple and kind of similar where here, whenever, I'm about to reload something, you can specify in the namespace form a, an on preload or on post reload to uh, function to, for the, the runtime to invoke. So it's like tools namespace with just the absolute minimum extra needed to be able to support hot reloading in a reasonably safe way. And one of my open like research items is how can I make this even safer because Clearly, this isn't enough. You could get yourself into a bad state. I want ultimately to be able to edit the thing from within itself. But uh, similar to like Clerk, and I think there's another thing in the size space that allows you to do notebooks inside of a namespace. You can also just use a, your regular editor and an NREPL also. So let's go on down here. The, the UI code here is based on Eclipse SWT. And I picked S Eclipse SWT because it's mature and uh, because it, it is very rigorous in following its own naming conventions. Um, to construct a widget, the, the constructor is always a 2R constructor uh, passing the parent and then style bits. The style bits are mirrored after the Windows GDI style bits and then that's re-implemented on the other platforms as needed. So what that means is that for me as a library implementer, making a closure-ish closure -ish kind of implementation of this, I can actually generate the API at compile time in a macro by reflectively going through the SWT widgets that are available on the class path, which also means that the, li the library is open which also means that the library itself is less than a, a thousand lines of code that mostly doesn't have to change in order to support new stuff. So it's still very early. There are a couple of bugs in here, but what you see here pretty much all works. This is one case where it doesn't work. And I, 
I'm in the middle of fixing this. But here is the, the API that I'm going for, where kind of like in a similar to in a web environment where you just on a widget you have on and then some action, then you have the a a function, but this is a macro. So we uh, automatically slurp this thing into a, a, a Lambda. Um, and then you just write the code. Uh, and that gets rid of all of the the boilerplate that you have when you're dealing with the, the Java interop. So that's a quick, really quick whirlwind thing here. Uh, over here, I don't know how easy this is to read. This tab here is a Quirk notebook. And I'm not gonna, for time's sake, I'm not gonna go do it, but basically this page here, it's set up so that it refreshes which, with whatever Clerk notebook you've uh, saved most recently in your editor, in your in your code editor, whether it's Emacs or I'm using VS Code here or whatever. And so what I do, the way I use this right now is at the beginning of a, a excuse me, when I'm doing a story, I copy and paste the story out of Jira into a, a namespace named after the number of the, the Jira ID. And uh, it's all in comments. I pretty it up with, with Markdown. And then uh, this, this, this program here that I've called Sidebar, it already has a connection to my, the dev database. It already has uh, connections to all the things. And it has um, a David, uh, in there. Uh, just to so, interrupt you for a moment, uh, it would yeah. be good to to kind of conclude in a couple of minutes, if you could. No rush, though. Thanks. Okay. And so, so similar to uh, I'm blanking on his name right now. Um, what he was saying about being able to integrate kind of like a knowledge base. This allowed. This is a primitive way of doing that, where I can already have the knowledge base where. The, the viewing the thing, let me see if I can get this up fast. Uh, not what I wanted, notebook. There. Um, okay, it's not gonna, I'm not gonna troubleshoot. We're viewing the thing, uh, it will automatically run whatever queries I've used. It provides a, a, work, a documentation of the work I've done so far, so I can pick up immediately where I was. It integrates all the things. And so I'm, I think that that's a, a good starting place for doing some of the things that some of us have already said we wanna do. And I'll stop there, any questions? Thank you so much for this. Uh, David, would you add just a bit about yourself for the recording, if you wish? Sure, my name is Dave Orm. I've worked in client-side user interface since the late 1980s um, when it was on, when client-side user interface was AppleSoft Basic on an Apple II, uh, II Plus and have been there to the present. Of course, I do server-side as well these days. Um, my experience in Clojure is uh, I've been doing quite a bit on the side. It's the most productive language I've ever worked in. I can do stuff in it that I could never do otherwise professionally. I've done ETL work in a previous company, and I'm currently working with Dividend Finance on their, uh, their, their loan platform. Thank you so much for this. And I think we'll not do questions now because there are a few presentations. And then afterwards, there will be time for discussion for those who can stay. And yeah, and uh, then uh, for all the others, let us try to do something like that, just a, a few minutes and maybe tell just a few words about yourselves and what uh, you wish to update about. And thank you so much, Dave. And Maurizio, would you like uh, to present? Oh. Sure, uh, let's go. Let me share my screen here. Okay. So this time I'm not improvising. I am doing a, a slideshow because otherwise things would be weird, exceptionally because I'm doing some work in Chlorine right now. So a very simple explanation of what Chlorine is, is a plugin to evaluate Clojury and I'm using Clojury star here to mean Clojure, Clojure Script, Babashka, Clojure CLR, Lumo, Plank, and I don't know what more. Yeah, everything that have a socket wrap I can evaluate into the Atom editor. 
And Clover is exactly the same plugin, feature by feature and bug by bug, that, but it's made for VS Code. And how do I integrate this to? These two editors is with the REPL tooling is like the core library that do have all the features that both plugins have. And I mean, all the features literally. So that's why it's a bug by bug uh, part. And the story of visual tools in this project begins when I decided that I wanted to create an interactive render. So it's a way to evaluate code render in the result and the UI and somehow allow the programmer to interact with the result, even by round tripping to the REPL. For example, I run the REPL, get a result, and then update my UI with the result that I got from the REPL. This is called an interactive render. It's in both Chlorine and Clover, but then it became the problems because Chlorine was originally not thought about that. So it's kind of like an afterthought that is becoming it's slowly becoming a first class. So a simple example of what an interactive render is, is exactly this one. You evaluate something that have a HTML that's more like a hiccup region thing. And then you can like get handlers and everything and it works exactly as you would expect if you are familiar with regions. Okay, so the trouble is uh, for things to work, I got into this idea of like, I rendered a repo, I got an, e an Eden. This Eden is interpreted by the SCI tool. That's the same that's powers Babashka and NBB. I have bindings to Regent and for the plugin commands that allow you to customize how you want to render that in the view. And then I render on the editor. And things become complicated when you want to use like external libraries, for example, Vega and Vega Lite, because you have a wall here, right? I mean, this is Clojure script word interpreted by SCI inside an editor. And here I have something else that's JavaScript. It doesn't speak Clojure script at all. So what I did in Chlorine, the result was Chlorine runs node. So I can render at the editor a HTML file, or in this case, a hiccup file. And in the HTML file, I can access Node.js libraries. So I use the Node.js version for Vega and Vega Lite. And then I just added some bindings so that the plugins and SCI could identify that Vega is on the not in the class path because it's node, it's on the required path for node. So everything works, everything is happy, but then it exists VS Code. And VS Code did not have this uh, support for node. In the VS Code world, things are more complicated. Like the Clover plugin, it's something, and the web view, that's, it's when I render the things, it's another thing altogether. So I evaluate code, I serialize, yeah, I'm, I'm finishing. Yeah, a couple of minutes, no rush, thanks. <laughs> okay, <laughs> uh, sorry. <laughs> so, okay, so I evaluate code, I serialize. This is a string message. I parse the result, I render in the web view, but if I have something that's node, I must serialize everything in a string and it, it will not never work. I mean, this is a callback. How do I call back something to here? It's impossible. So new ideas that I came was um, to allow the full customization over the rendering process. Right now, as I told, interactive render is some kind of afterthought. I am deciding on doing and transforming it on first class. So anyone can decide how I want to render vector maps and sets and everything else. So I could customize how I want to render that on, with metadata, for example, I could sign a function that I want to render, I don't know, as a chessboard and Clorine will automatically discover that and use a chessboard. And this will need metadata support on the repo. We don't have that now. Also remember that's a socket repo. So there's no end repo. There's, you don't, we don't expect these things to be on the class path and we don't want to inject these things, these things on the class path. This is, I think the most challenging Pro, uh, process of this whole idea. And to work with VS Code, we are kind of trying on compiling Node.js visual libraries with Webpack and then some 12 views. I did a proof of concept 
but it's really slow and it's not very reliable. Sometimes you lose data in the process. Sometimes you don't have the exports and everything else. But then, well, there are some ideas. And what I would love to use, it's, well, first of things, Clone Clover will always be a plugin to evaluate Clojury everything. So I can't rely on JVM. I can't rely on like plugins that may exist only on the class path because, for example, in Lumo or in Babashka, the concept of class path do not exist exactly. In Babashka it does, but anyway, in NBB it doesn't. And I really want Chlorine to become a data exploration tool like Portal, Rebel. Um, also, if people want to do data science inside the dig, their editors would be great too. And there's a lot of unexplored potentials. Right now, I only support JS based editors, but I could use like WebSocket to connect to a web view, and the web view could be a browser, for example. So, VIM, now VIM, other editors. I don't know if Emacs would work because it, it doesn't run JavaScript, but maybe we can like start a Node.js server and make the communication with it. But it's just you're missing the visual components and it needs to be either in Clojure script or in JavaScript so I can like bind everything together. Or we could migrate REPL tool into Clojury and or CLJC, but that will be probably too much work. That's it, thanks. That's all. <laughs> Thank you so much. Amazing. Okay. Yeah. Um, Adrian, maybe, is it a good time? Yeah, let me um, figure out how to share my screen. Um, how do you do that? Uh, there is a green button if you kind of hover over the bottom of the screen. Uh, no. Um. Oh, I got it too. Okay, actually, I need to change my settings to allow sharing screen. So maybe yeah, come back. Data, data. Great. Um, yeah, and maybe Chris B, is it a good time? Uh, yeah, now's a, a good time. <clears throat> okay, so six, six to, or five to six minutes. Let's see. Yeah. I'm going to share my screen. And does this look okay? Yes. It is? Okay. It's, is it, is it wide or is it like 1080p? I just, is it uh, good? It is, I think it's great. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Just to, just to make sure. Uh, okay. So I've been working on this feature in portal where um, you don't rely so much on tap because maybe, I don't know if people are familiar with tap is like how you can send data to places like uh, visual tools. But so, so sometimes you don't always want to tap. Sometimes you just want to watch something, whether it be an atom or anything else. Um, so what I've been like, right, normally you would come over here and you would just, sorry, you would like tap some data and you would get it in your viewer. Uh, depending on what ad taps you added and you would like be able to explore it. Um, but what I would also be able to build is like dashboards um, because like the UI is getting a little bit complicated and I wanna be able to track its state. So if I open up the web portal that's connected to my UI, uh, I did that with command shift O. Uh, here's kind of what I'm envisioning uh, or here's what I, what I wanna be able to build with, with portal for specific applications, right? Um, I want to be able to monitor my app state. I want to be, uh, I, I do want taps, but I want them to be like another thing, not the main thing. And then for this, for, for, for the way that portal works, I have like an RPC log that I want to maintain just to make sure that things are working as I expect. Uh, and so the code for this looks like this, where it's just some hiccup um, right here. And I say, hey, use the hiccup viewer. I have some like styling, right? right here and right here. Uh, I have labels for the different parts of my state. And then I just render the inspector for the different atoms that I have. And that's kind of what you're seeing right here is that this little DREF is implying that this value is coupled to an atom, uh, right? If I wanted to not DREF it, if I just want to do like view the inspector for it or maybe pretty print it, right? That's what it would look like. But actually no, I want to DREF it so I can interact with it. 
Um, yeah, so like as I kind of navigate and use my UI, I can see, okay, my application state contains this information. Here are all the RPC functions I made. Here are the arguments that I'm passing along. Uh, here's what I got returned, right? This is how I populate some of the command in information. Like if I'm over here and I do command shift P, right? And one of the functions I got back was the bean function. Here's the doc string. So it's kind of a little bit of a, a look in, inside of how it's implemented. But right, this is the kind of tooling that I want to be able to build ad hoc for the different applications that I have, uh, right? Because this setup makes sense for the portal UI, but it might not make sense for your application. But it's still nice to be able to just track this information. So let's go back here, collapse it. Um, I think that's the like main thing I wanted to show um, is that you can now um, send out atoms, deref them, and they'll update live. So if I close this, like uh, a more simpler use case, I guess, is like right here. Um, so in, in conjunction with that, instead of setting the tap, or sorry, I don't know if you guys noticed, but the way I did that is when I opened up portal, I passed it a value, which was the like dashboard, which is like that hiccup stuff. So to, uh, to like simplify that a little bit, let me come over here. Let me close this portal and say, no, I want to open it, but I want to specify the root value where the root value here is an atom. And I'll open that up right here. And now I can kind of just, I, I don't need add tap and tap. I just can do it. I, I can just reset into an atom and do whatever I want. Well, it is a bit challenging to kind of support this because the clear button doesn't necessarily make sense anymore. Uh, but I tried to make it make a little bit of sense. It'll like clear whatever the atom is that's at the root. So it, it kind of makes sense, but it breaks some of the UX. But yeah, it's, it's nice because now you can just, if you just want to like hard reset the value that's there. And the, the, this is different than the portal atom because it's not, um, uh, the, the, the portal atom is about dereferencing values that are selected. Right, so right here I opened up with value, it's called dev, if I deref dev, it's going to give me what I have selected, which right now is a list containing one, two, three. So they, they're they both atoms, but they're for different purposes. So um, I just kind of wanted to show that off, but I think that's pretty much it for me. That is great news. That is simply great news. Yeah, thank you so much for this. Um, yeah, and um, maybe Lucas, uh, Lucas, uh, is it is it good time or? Um... Yeah, sure, I can go. Yeah, thanks. Uh, share screen. Oh no, apparently I have the same problem. I just reinstalled the Mac. Uh, well, it's a new Mac. Uh, I need to set my system preferences. Sorry. Thanks. So uh, maybe John, uh, John, is it good time uh, if you wish to update about anything? I'm not sure. I think I did get my. Um, oh. oh, okay. Yeah, let 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 somebody else go. Yeah, sure. Yeah, Adrian, that would be wonderful. Thanks. Okay. Um, so, can everybody see this? This looks like mostly white window with closure code in it. Sort of. Yes. Okay. So, um, what I made was a. Um, it basically just views EDA data. You can also view JSON. Uh, there's a web version. This is running on the JVM. So this is um, in process, which is nice um, if you're working on the JVM. Um, and the big, I mean, the big feature is that you can kind of resize it and it will try to use however much space is available. Um, and then you can explore just by clicking. So this is um, Reddit data. And so uh, typically if you, uh, it's really nice because you can um, kind of interactively explore similar to other tools. Um, the kind of, um, let's see, the big benefit is that um, it can also work with um, lazy sequences. So a lot of times if you do something like range and you accidentally print that to your um, REPL, it will just kind of explode, um, but um, one of the goals for this was to make it a, um, 
to not explode on those certain cases. So um, yeah, that's, that's basically it. That is wonderful. Yeah, and I hope to learn more about it soon. And uh, yeah, so um, maybe, uh, uh, Lukas, is it good time now? Uh, I hope so. Uh, I can try. Yeah. Oh, no, I can push the share button. Perfect. OK, yeah. um, so I'll do it the other way around. I'm Lucas. Hey, uh, I. this is the main thing that I did with my life. Until now, in closure, um, it's it's a mostly backend thing for tracing and has this visual component, which is why I'm in the visual space now. Um, but the thing I wanted to show is that I ran into this project. Um, it's called Microsoft Sentence, and it is, has a subcomponent that's called Vega DeckJL. DeckJL is a its own library uh, that does um, WebGL. Uh, stuff with a little bit nicer, uh, with a nicer API. And they have a Vega deck JL that lets you use your Vega specifications um, and they get rendered in a 3D canvas, so a WebGL canvas. Um, I've got a little playground in my uh, thing. This is uh, the, the 3D version. You can just, you can zoom in, zoom out without actually doing the it by hand. I to do it in my project, I had to where is my thing? Uh, I had to code this into the into the specification. This thing lets you do it by uh, the, immediately. And this is half a million points and it's pretty nice and fast and works um, without me doing anything. The code for this is uh, not complicated. It's inside my playground in uh, the Yomni Trace repo. Um, well, it's a little bit much, but it's mostly just uh, raw data. Um, it's an Omni Trace dev playground if somebody wants to play around with it. Um, but mostly it's just coding the Vega DeckGL, QGL instead of the normal Vega stuff and rendering in the DeckGL. Um, and then it basically runs without doing anything extra. I would say around 80% of the usual Vega spec works. I've been playing around with it. I think it's mostly having problems um, with color stuff, but um, like I only spent like an hour or two uh, playing with it. But I thought I would share it since everybody in here mostly is using Vega for stuff. So. Yeah. That is great. Yeah, it matters a lot uh, to be able to do that. And yeah, um, thank you so much. And maybe John uh, has something to share, if that is good. Uh, what do you think, John? Uh, I don't know exactly. <laughs> it's because it's... Uh, um... Okay, you know, I, can, I can give a very, very, very brief pan wavy thing and then suggest people if they're interested, they can watch the more detailed intro to Cite that was presented at the Closure Boston meetup, which is linked in some Zulip channels. So if anybody actually cares about, then they can take a look at that. So this is gonna be super quick. Um, so let me do it. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so I'm not gonna, this is a little bit about uh, the, uh, the presentation that I gave actually, but I'm not gonna go through hardly any of this. I'm just gonna say, okay, Cite is this thing, it's a standalone application. It's very different from pretty much anything else that's been discussed. It's, it's focused more on easy rather than simple. So literally the quick to hand kind of stuff. Um, and the main reason is, is because you don't want to have, I just don't want to have ceremonies and things like that when I want to dive in and start doing 
uh, data exploration, visualization, and stuff like that. And also people in the labs, they're, you know, they don't want to be uh, trying to learn big IDEs and all that kind of stuff because those people that they're not programmers per se, they're sort of programmers, but let's put it this way, they're not software developers. How's that? So anyways, uh, this thing has very strong dynamic dependencies. You don't need to set up projects or any of that kind of stuff. You can just load this thing and start firing away. Um, I'm not going to show some of these things. I, I'm, I'm going to show this just this one. You can build full blown client server dashboards with this thing. Um, and actually, let me just do uh, a quick example of that. I actually loaded this up while we were talking. So here's, a, here's one from the labs that kind of show this in the presentation as well and go over it in a lot more detail. Um, but when you load this thing up, you can select your experiments here, it updates all these sorts of things. You can, uh, my, the mice are always kind of interesting and click go and it grinds away for a while. All of this is being, when, when the uh, spinner is going, all of that's being run on the JVM. So there's 218 million reads in this thing. There's a bunch of information here for the biologists. Um, so there you go. And that's all they're interested in. They don't care about any of the uh, details about how it works. So that's that. Um, so you can build these uh, full-blown dashboards. And if you're interested in that, there's going to be another follow-on presentation at, at the next Boston uh, Closure Meetup, which I guess is a week from yesterday, on detailing how, how you build those sorts of things, so more advanced topics. <clears throat> um, the other thing is, is all the there's all these editors. This document itself is is a site document. Um, you can open up these editors that create the body or the canvas over here. Close them up if you want to publish things. The nice thing is, is yeah, you do have Emacs, Vim, and Sublime. It's all written in Code Mirror. So because of that, all the editors are programmable with ClojureScript and that gives you a very, very potent ability to do transformations and uh, all sorts of other interrogation of the code in the editors as true structural editing. So you can basically grab the, the text, turn it into Clojure data structures and off you go. Um, code execution is, there's, three different variations of it because of the client and server aspect. So you can just run things on the J JS engine and closure script, or you can just run things on the JVM, basically just like CIDR. Um, and then you can run this mixed code capability where the client controls the flow. And, and that's done through um, some of this nifty editor stuff where you rewrite everything into promise change so that you get a synchronous flow as controlled by the client. So there's a little bit of stuff here about how that works, more details in that other presentation. There's a couple of flavors of the, this tab thing. Well, this is kind of just like what we have here. You can organize documents. You can create things like uh, tabs that contain the widgets and the code. This, 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 this uses database stuff and everything else. So there's all kinds of junk going on here. You can sort of structure that with these tabs. There's a couple of kinds of tabs. One is like this one here, where you have the main editor that can, can create. Um, uh, John, uh, it would be good to conclude in a couple of minutes, if you could. Oh, I'm, rush. I'm, Thanks. I'm, I'm, a, I'm very close to done, my friend. Uh, so anyways, there's, Two flavors of those things where you can create stuff like this and then another one that's literally just uh, we can show it over here as an example where you have editor and output and it's like there you go it's it's very much like an emacs kind of a thing and uh yeah so if you're interested in more about this thing you can uh, look at that intro and maybe if you're further interested you can attend the next one next Thursday. That's it. How do I get out of this? Oh, stop here. That was amazing. Great. Yeah.
So um, let, that was the first part. And so many updates, just little tastes of things which are happening. What we hope to do now is to have discussion of how this group can work together. And maybe let us just say that everything we were seeing deserves more time. And you know, anybody who has something to demonstrate, please use this group. We could have an interview with you. We could have a meetup or workshop or whatever format you like to share the things you're creating. And uh, let us think how to make this useful for, for you as tool creators. And um, I think Pavel uh, did create a little spreadsheet that we could use to, to kind of brainstorm together about our hopes. And maybe what we could do now is for half an hour, spend some time with this spreadsheet and kind of think about the main aspects of what we are creating as a group. And then after this half an hour, we could stop the recording and keep chatting, at least for those who can stay and chat more. Uh, is it good? Is it a good plan? Yeah. Great. So, uh, Pavel, would you like to share the screen and maybe we could kind of... Yeah, um, I can. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. I, um, I think, I, I mean, I'm just, uh, I was just kind of, sort of improvising uh, while people were talking at the same time, paying attention to what people were saying, but, uh, what I have is this here. I've made some notes. Uh, so I, I think if, you know, after this meeting or maybe just now, I don't know if Daniel, I've sent, I've sent the, I shared this with you as well. So you can, you can distribute it with, to people and, and, or make it public or whatever you think uh, is the right way. Can we zoom to... in a little bit? Sorry. Uh, yeah, I think so. Is this browser zoom going to work? Well, this is uh, awful, but uh, fine. Fine. Um, so, um, so I made some notes. Uh, so that maybe could be something that people can then um, add to the notes, especially if you, especially people who present it. I think uh, just from just to keep record of today's meeting, if if we want to um, re reference that in the future or just post it somewhere. That would be nice. This is just the starting point. I probably got a lot of things wrong, so I'm going to share this with 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 you all. And um, if you want to correct me, then just please correct me and add the links to your tools and all, all the other things. And John talked about the the YouTube video from Boston Clo um, Closure Meetup, so that would be a good thing to place to uh, to, to post here as well and so on. But what I was thinking that maybe a good because like eventually we kind of want to have we want to have an idea of how people in this space can collaborate and um and have some sort of common ground um a common sort of language to um for talking about this stuff so um this is the this is the couple of points i've posted on zulip um like a day or two before, um, ago uh, but I think before we kind of get to this, I think there's going to be a couple of steps that we will have to go through. And I, and while people were talking about their tools, I was thinking that maybe maybe a good first step would be just to have a big list of tools and 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 kind of identify different aspects that uh, make up those tools uh, and try to kind of then fill in this table because uh, we'll we'll then have this kind of matrix of you know who is doing what and and we can then kind of look at it and see what are the areas of overlap and um and what platforms are covered and those kinds of things so so this is just a starting point so i've just put a couple of examples of things but um i'm sure everyone who's who's actively involved in developing in those tools are going to have you'll, you'll have better ideas of what to put here and then kind of collaborate um, and work out sort of um, work out um, uh, work out the, the dimensions of on, on which we can, we should kind of um, look uh, look at the tools. Um, yeah, so that's my two cents. Um, um, I think I don't know if we can 
do any for any of this uh, sort of live here but um i definitely think we should kind of share this and spend some time working out the details um so this kind of um, truthfully or, or 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 you know it's a good model for what's actually happening so that's my two cents if anyone wants to comment or or suggest uh, sort of what we should then do next and so on then yeah that, that is great and uh, so i think this matrix of the whole landscape we can fill it in uh, offline and it will be so yeah. useful to have that and uh, maybe the other sheet uh, you were showing uh, yeah. is something that could be actually this discussion right of oh yes yeah i think uh, uh, so my, my thinking was that um we will we can have like initial sort of um initial thoughts on those on those points right now but i think this would be a helpful exercise to get uh to go, get more clarity and 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 then kind of circle back to this discussion once we have those all those things filled in we will have a better sort of understanding of of the landscape i think um so, so on its own, it's kind of valuable thing maybe to share with people who are making those decisions and so on and so on. But I think this is important for, for us to see like what other people are doing in this space. So, so, so we all kind of have better awareness of the landscape. Um, but we can start with this just as a sort of first, um, first approx approximation. So it would be nice to hear people's thoughts about like, um, about the goals uh, for the projects uh, uh, and ambitions of, for the of, for the project and um, the platforms they want to support um, and what 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 they think could be uh, like there's a little like little point I've kind of added here. So what do you think are the parts of the system that you kind of identified as something that could be reusable and maybe having a discussion um, around that would be nice. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe let us begin with a little question to everybody. Is there anything in this short list we're seeing that should be added? Any other aspect of yes. us as a group that we wish to discuss today? Like, for example, the format, how we should meet, how often, uh, what, what tools we have as a group to collaborate. So maybe that is another aspect that could be added here. Or maybe there is anything else that should be added. Yeah, I think uh, though we've been talking beforehand, all right, and um, I think one of the things that we do we noticed was that um, everybody is coming at it uh, from a little bit different perspective, and we're like, I was saying, yeah, most of us are using Vega for something, but like others aren't, so they probably aren't that interested to be like in the Vega workshop meetup, whatever, um, and other people are using closure script, others are using whatever. Um, so I think it would kind of make sense um, if we had subgroups, exactly. Uh, thank you for typing that in. <laughs> and um, I don't think we have to decide them right now, um, but I think like that's gonna be one of the things that's gonna come out of the ma matrix or not the movie, but the other one. And um, then we can see, okay, well, we've got uh, the, um, Reveal and Portal and whatever who are using Vega to display stuff, and we've got Clerk who has uh, there, which has like uh, viewers, and the viewers could be maybe shared between like Portal and Clerk um, or us as well, since there's a viewers as well. And then we would have subgroups for like Vega and viewers, and then we would have subgroups for I don't know, uh, the maybe like okay, how do we do interaction with the user because everybody needs hotkeys in their tool and so on, so. Can we like maybe have a sub library for, I don't know, for user interaction or whatever, uh, kind of depending on what comes out of the uh, matrix thing. That is great. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe, maybe one way we could go about this list now is that we could and I mean, anybody could uh, share their thoughts about all these aspects, about what should be added here to any of these lines, these rows of the table, right? For example, what could be the subgroups, what kind of meetings we should have, or what are the goals and ambitions or whatever. 
So is it good that anybody here would like to briefly share thoughts about any of these roles? Is it a good way to go about it, Pavel and Lucas? Yeah, great. So does anybody wish to begin with a few comments? Um, okay, um, so I've, um, I, I like making these visualizations and kind of um, trying to find interesting ways to explore heterogeneous data that's kind of larger than can just print it out to the REPL. Um, but I'm not, I'm less interested in making things like really cool things like portal and reveal, which are kind of modes for combining all these things together and letting you uh, explore them. Um, and doing all the shortcuts and making that process, making that piece really um, work great. Um, and the so I I have my own UI library called Membrane, and it um, you can it's uh, platform agnostic. So basically, any environment where you can um, draw shapes, text, and images, it can render to. So um, if there is a kind of um, plug-in interface that I can program to, that would be ideal for me because I can just make these visualizations, um, make it, you know, uh, adhere to whatever this interface is, and then hopefully it can run both in Reveal and in um, Portal and in, you know, any of these environments just because um, it doesn't. Uh, so I've already made some Reveal plugins, but um, uh, I've reused the, what I was demoing was called Viscous. Um, as you can see, there's a web demo, so that works in WebGL, but you can also have it spit out HTML. And um, So I'm interested in having a way to kind of plug into these other tools that package things together. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if this is the, if, if, if we're supposed to be discussing this right now, but I think um, it, for web, it's particularly difficult because uh, you only have closure script. And I think closure script, the mode that I've seen, like it's most often used in is like you dev and then you deploy and you don't, and you can't, you can't dev on the deployed thing, right? They're like two distinct phases. Whereas like closure, the JVM, it's much easier to do both of them at the same time. Um, so like, I think a lot of people are reaching for a CI um, to like provide extensibility in, in, in the like browser. Uh, and so I think, like SCI is a part of it, maybe. I'm not sure if that, or maybe we could try Bootstrap Closure Script. I don't know what would be better or what would work. Um, but yeah, I would also be interested in kind of how we can better compose these tools together. <clears throat> I just, yeah, I just want to say one thing about that. Uh, if you use self-hosted Closure Script, like in Cite, all of that stuff, you can you can use the the JS engine, and it often looks exactly like the JVM. There's lots of examples where I do that. As long as the, the resources are available on the JS engine, it's basically no different. Uh, but like, so how would you provide code loading? Because I think that's like the first thing that happens is if someone has a bunch of namespaces, right, and, and they want to load their plugin as like from, from source, you have to resolve all the namespaces. Actually, in, you can actually do that. I mean, it, it's, it's maybe not quite as nice and convenient, but literally just putting them in uh, script tags in, in your HTML file will bring them in and you can just use them with interop as if they were bundled. I, I do that with uh, MathJax and some other stuff. I don't even bother to try and do anything. I just pull the scripts and use them. Yeah, um, great. Yeah, and so maybe let us keep thinking about the group, about the, the scope of what we're, uh, yeah, that, that's great. They're all great comments, but maybe let us kind of try to think about our scope, about what we, should, we hope to do. Um, what we hope to discuss as a group and how, and following Pavel's list. Any comments about that? Mm. 
Yeah, so maybe, maybe Pavel, I'll ask to add something to the subgroups, which is this question of compatibility, of how we create bridges across tools that allow to create an ec ecosystem that grows well. And that is something I hope just a few of us could kind of continuously discuss as a group. Does it make sense, this compatibility topic? Yeah, for me, actually make a lot of sense. Uh, one of the most problematic things for me, at least in, in Chlorine Clover, is that I don't want to, I don't know, handle this compatibility layer between visual tools and closure script and everything else. So if someone already did all the heavy work and I could just plug in into Chlorine, I will be really, really glad. <laughs> I think it would also be, I don't know if anybody's interested at all, but um, we're mostly like right now, we're mostly talking about collaboration on the tooling side um, and like building the tools. I don't know if anybody here is interested in like um, presenting those tools to the, like the bigger community uh, or like making it new friendly, uh, to which like, I don't know if that's the right term for it. Um, but I've like, I've now shown closure to like multiple people and it was always like, oh yeah, okay. Um, how do I start coding in it? And then you tell them, oh yeah, just download Calva and it's gonna be fine. And some of them were like, oh yeah, but like, I don't know what to do in it. And the tools have kind of like the same problems, especially once they get a little bit more complex. Um, like when I started, I don't know what, a few months ago uh, uh, and saw a portal for the first time, I was like, ah, yeah, I'm just going to tap some stuff over and uh, choose a viewer and it's going to be fine. And these days it's like, ah, yeah, I need to think, do I want an atom that's going to be like doing it itself? Do I want to do this? Do I want to write my own viewer and so on? And like the documentation side of it and like the presentation, how do all those t tools work together? Uh, it's also like problem kind of, um, I don't know. I'm not somebody who like is gonna solve that. I'm not like the best communicator in the world, but uh, maybe somebody like Daniel, who's like better at talking to people <laughs> um, or I don't know, somebody who's interested um, would handle that side of things. I don't know if this is something that makes sense for this group or not. How do you see it working? Could you explain like a flow that you imagine happening? Um, I'm thinking kind of like a subgroup as well, where it's like, okay, um, how do we present these tools? How do we um, show how they work? How do we uh, tell people, oh, ah, yeah, okay, so you just started and you only want to like show some stuff? Okay, maybe choose between reveal and portal. Oh, you want to do notebooks? Okay, what kind of notebooks do you need? Okay, then choose also clerk or whatever, and so on. So, like, kind of a little bit more, I don't know, hint, hint wavy stuff. <laughs> um, but I don't know how it's like, like I said, I'm not like the communication type person. Um, so I don't know what the, uh, the, the end result should be, but I'm thinking it would make sense that we have some kind of like PR uh, from this group to the wider world or not from the group, but like from the visual tools thingy perspective. I love, I love like how a programmer is trying to figure out marketing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just, That's just uh, <laughs> some P, do some PR stuff. Oh, we need <laughs> stickers. Yeah. Stickers so, for everything. You know, but <laughs> I think it's good. So good, really good stuff there. I think I think what will be really cool is I don't know if it's just uh, up to everyone's liking and whatever. But if we're thinking about. Um, people that are quite new to closure maybe and, and definitely new to those kinds of tools and those kinds of workflows that we have with closure with those connected tools like REPL connected tools and so on uh, I think maybe just having one entry point but the, for, for like just a website you hear you like even if I'm thinking about this comparison table like place to host this kind of information right like if there's going to be uh, and then pointing to like your own sort of github um 
um, you know, GitHub repos and and or, or web pages if you have web pages for those tools and so on. But having just one um, source of information where you can go, oh, I look, you know, just look through all the available options and say, okay, I kind of look, you know, the the the, the look of this tool uh, or the other tool, and then going down the rabbit hole of kind of learning more about that tool. And if there is more resources, like some of those conversations, conversations are maybe end up being helpful to other people as well. So maybe a place to host those conversations as well. Um, there used to be this, I don't know what happened, maybe Daniel or, or Sami is yeah, actually is gone now, but like, I remember like even the previous, um, previous library closure, like I don't mean 2021, but 2020, I think there was, um, there was this cool talk from Sami and 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 that time there was some conversation around having closure website being you know um, I don't know yeah. if that happened, anything happened around that maybe that could be part of that website. Yeah, yeah. So uh, maybe a brief update. The closure website tried to be like an entry point about closure tools and libraries for data science, and it never became complete. And now these very days, uh, our friend Ethan Miller is looking into it and trying to reorganize things so that there will be a clear path to getting the first answers to the first questions around data science. It could be uh, like related to this visual, uh, visual tools topic. And if anybody is interested in helping Ethan in just website design of how to make things clear and accessible, then I think Ethan will be very much happy about it. And yeah, and we're hoping to have something soon. Yeah, I really like this idea of someone being like, there's a lot of tools, I don't know which one I want to, or which one will be the most useful to me right now. And kind of having this comparison chart to guide them through like what they should use and what they should, um, right? Because there are more and more options now. So, and they're, they're, they're all focused on different things. Yeah, I think um, we also wanted to talk about like the, the meeting times uh, and how often we want to do it and so on. And I think it would kind of make sense to have it split by like, if we want to like organize by subgroups um, where it's like, okay, we, we, I don't know what the subgroups are going to be about uh, having the subgroups decide how often they meet and in what format and so on. Um, but having also like uh, an umbrella visual tools thing where we meet everybody uh, the, who's doing anything in this space and wants to join um, something like this with like, I don't know if we want to do more or I think that the, the idea for this one was to be very informal where everybody's just, oh, okay, we don't really know what, how this is going to work yet. So we can just talk about it. Um, but I think at some point it's gonna be like okay we've got a more or less an idea um so it's gonna be a little more formalized probably who knows um but it would make sense to i don't know maybe like once a month once every two months or something for like the whole group and all the subgroups can like decide for themselves if they want to do it more often less often depending on how much collaboration they actually do or if they're just uh, presenting their own stuff or whatever um Especially if we have many subgroups, I don't know how many it's going to be, uh, but then having uh, the having meetings every two weeks for 10 subgroups is going to be like, okay, so I just started a new job and now I need to quit it again. And I think they're not going to be happy. Yeah, yeah, it may make a little bit time for this to kind of uh, uh, become uh, systematic, but uh, yeah, I think a monthly meeting like this one is something we can try. Not every time everybody can join, but uh, we could just set something for a month from now. And then as those potential subgroups, we could just have first ad hoc meetings and see if it makes sense to make it something that is uh, kind of continuous. And yeah, sorry, uh, any thoughts about that? Um, I, I, I like that. Um, I think I have one, one like subgroup I would want to like see if people are, would be interested in is discussing implementation details because I kind of like want to see how people implemented their thing. 
kind of and what I can learn from that and maybe share some of the things that I've learned in implementing the features that I've implemented. So, so just like specifically, so like it's just all technical, all of them, like, you know, what issues did you run up against? And because I'm, yeah, I'm really curious as to how people did things. Do you think it makes sense to have that as a, like its own group or do you think we should have, because like if I'm, if I have like a, I don't know, bigger group and then I'm gonna probably present, okay, well, what strange stuff did I do in my specification to get like Flamegrass going or whatever? Or uh, if we're talking about, I don't know, the, the views group that uh, does talking about like maybe all sharing the same views um, and then it's also going to be pretty technical. Should we have like also a show me your code style group or should this be part of the other ones, you know, should be it be on topic or not? <laughs> Nobody <laughs> knows. Yeah, yeah, I don't know either. I think it's kind of, I like the idea of having a, a like more technical uh, the, and here's all my reduced calls um, group, uh, but I don't know if maybe like it's also going to be interesting for people who for that topic. So maybe it makes sense to have the show me your code thing be on topic every like every meeting i just wanted to say every week but that might be like a little bit much twice um, a week. yeah twice a week yeah twice daily why i think it's the age old sort of classification problem right like is the yeah, yeah, exactly. uh, the technical portion part of every other sort of mm -hmm. domain or is it a separate thing and but i think it's going to help to actually go through this exercise of doing this comparison table mm -hmm. uh, after after we break and just have a little bit of time of thinking about this and then trying to figure out like answers to some of those questions. Maybe they're going to be, maybe we're going to find a more natural sort of um, uh, d d d sort of lines of you know subgrouping and stuff like that. Um, so I I think so at least. Um, but I was also thinking about one of the, the questions that I think initially when that happened on this kind of data science special day on this on Sunday after reclosure, um, would there be a sense maybe of trying to identify um, certain things that could be extracted from tools and reused um, and then kind of setting up um, uh, some sort of sort of repos, maybe under site closure, maybe under something else, just to just to work on that, maybe. Um, not necessarily sort of jumping straight away to the, <laughs> to, you know, to that um, really sort of detailed part of it, but at least kind of looking for some, some tools and mm -hmm. talking a little bit more about how, how those, more to Chris's point about implementation details, like where people kind of realize that um, people are duplicating each other's work, maybe there's going to be some mm -hmm. opportunity for reuse there. Yeah, I think that was like one of the most interesting parts from your matrix that you uh, had at the bottom, um, where it was uh, the generic parts that could be ripped out and be made into its own library. At one point, I was thinking about uh, the pulling portal apart and uh, because I wanted to just have it display my thing, so I could just load my Omnitrace and not have like all the other portal. Uh, the, components and then like after two hours or something I was like okay I'm throwing like half of it away uh, which is also strange <laughs> um, but there's a lot of like sub components that could be like pulled out into their own library and other uh, the other of these tools have like the same sub parts uh, where we could like squish them together and have like a library that everybody uses if it makes sense for them instead of everybody building it like integrated into the tool yeah i've been i've been meaning to break things apart but then the problem i have is there's a bunch of ways to do it and i don't know what's the most useful so i think having that this having that discussion about like what pieces are useful would be really interesting because then that can help help people figure out how to cut things up mm -hmm. um exactly. but i think just as important as sharing code i think if we can like share ux if that makes sense like it, like let, let's say it's kind of hard to share code up front because there's like coupling but i think even if we can't do that we should i don't know how I'll maybe have some ux patterns that are shared not everything right because you, mm -hmm. you should have room to experiment but like hey if you do this th this will happen and if a lot of the tools do the same thing then users 
can be like, oh, I know how to do this because I learned how to do it in this tool. And now I'm mm -hmm. proficient in this other tool. So kind of like having some common UX shared patterns would be nice in the, yeah. independently of the code that's implementing it. I really like the, uh, I think I suggested it to you for portal at some point, um, but it's a little bit heavyweight. Uh, um, the command palette uh, that is used in next journals, well, the next journal site, uh, they, I think they've got uh, it open sourced now. Uh, so that's, that's one cool. of the things that I found really cool, but it's a little bit heavyweight, as I said, for some of the tooling. Um, but I think we've got multiple e style of things. Uh, and it could be pulled out of other uh, the things so that every, like if I jump from one tool to the other, I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, I know this command palette, I can just use it. I think that was based on the Emacs thing, right? Like the witch key kind of um, idea in Emacs. Right? The next journal. We uh, was, were inspired by that, I think. And. Oh. One thing I like to get a sense of is kind of pull the community and find out. <clears throat> I mean, it seems like a lot of the typically it's just uh, kind of Vlad who does reveal who is um, doing visualizations kind of just on the JVM side. Um, I think there's a lot of benefits to having both your, you know, if you're working on the JVM, having in process visualizations, or if you're working in Closure Script, having in process visualizations. Um, I like to get a sense of the community of who's on the JVM that's using. Um, kind of using the closure script front ends and who's on the JVM. Uh, I mean, in general, um, just I, I'm more on the JVM side. I like the in-process stuff. And um, I know that a lot of the front ends are in closure script. So kind of getting a sense of um, what other, I don't know, who's also interested in that direction. Um, I mean, I think there's there's some amount of uh, crossover that you can have between um, uh, the closure script front end stuff and the JVM front end stuff, but there is a little bit of uh, impedance mismatch there. Um. Mm. Yeah, that is great. By the way, uh, we are about around the official time. And maybe in a moment, uh, let us ask if anybody is on a rush and needs to leave or whether, whether it is good actually to continue a little bit. And at some point we'll stop the recording and make it even more informal. Uh, any thoughts about that? Does anybody need to leave soon or should we make it more relaxed? What do you think? I need to run in a second. So yeah. feel free that I've shared this with you. Feel free to sort of continue chipping away and share with everyone and so on, so on, so on. Um, but yeah, I just want to say thank you. Everyone has been amazing. Um, and see you around. Pavel, that yeah. was great. Yeah. yeah. Um, guys, thanks, guys. Thank you. Um, maybe I'll ask for a moment those who were the voices who were not so heard this time, uh, if there is any comments. Uh, Rohit and Kira and Kurt and Sean, uh, if you have any thoughts, anything you wish to say about what we have been uh, doing, um, only if you would like, you know. Um, um, uh, oh, somebody is writing something. Oh, yeah, so people are saying goodbye. And yeah, so. Um, any comments before we end the recorded part? Um, any conclusion from anybody who wishes to say anything? Great, so maybe we will say goodbye to the recording and to, to our friends who are listening to this uh, session. Uh, please reach out, please join this group and see how we can collaborate together. That was just a little taste of the common thinking process we wish to have as a group and we will continue offline on the chat. And I think what we will do is try to make it a monthly meeting and then uh, throughout the month add some ad hoc meetings that will become those subgroups hopefully. So for example, Crispy suggested this idea of sharing practices, how we do things. So maybe we could ask Chris B one day to share the code and kind of go through the code of Portal or 
any other project of uh, so, uh, somebody, we could have a session just about that, just learning the internals of a tool. And that could become a subgroup, if it makes sense. And we had those other ideas. And uh, so we will say goodbye now uh, and uh, keep chatting after the recording. Uh, so thank you so much for everybody and uh, people who are listening. Let us talk, let us um, um, collaborate on that. So goodbye to the recording and see you soon in next times.